in Chicago at the big telecom event and I'm sitting here with Ali Kafel from Stratus Technologies. Now you're the senior director and head of telecom business strategy at Stratus Technologies, is that right? That is correct, yes. Well, thanks for joining me. Tell me, what is Stratus Technologies sort of current area of focus? So we're focused currently on software-based fault tolerance systems, actually software-based fault tolerant infrastructure that really enables telcos and application developers to deploy VNFs, virtual network functions, in an open stack environment and a KVM environment without having to change any code in the application itself. So it's all done by the software infrastructure. So how does that fit into your strategy? What is your strategy there? So our strategy is to uh, provide, as I said, seamless um, software infrastructure and the way we're doing it is we're contributing some code into the open source community in the KVM kernel space. And then we're also providing uh, software and user space, both for uh, KVM and OpenStack, uh, so that when a developer or telco uses our software infrastructure, they can use it on any uh, Linux distribution. And they don't have to really modify their code at all because the software infrastructure takes care of the high availability and fault tolerance seamlessly and transparently to the application. So your customers are telcos and enterprises? Uh, yes, uh, mostly telcos, uh, but yes, enterprises as well. Because you know, as you know, the telcos are settled into the enterprises. So how is your work sort of addressing their core needs? Uh, so that's a great question. So as you know right now, there's a big movement in uh, NFV, network functions virtualization. Uh, one of the big area of concern that a lot of the telcos have is that high availability has not yet been built into OpenStack. So there's a lot of uh, working groups in OpenStack on how you do high availability and fault tolerance. And what we're doing is uh, creating this infrastructure that enables them to provide high availability and fault tolerance, stateful fault tolerance, the way they've always done it in the past. But instead of using a hardware-based approach, this uses really a software-based approach in the software infrastructure itself. Okay, let's talk about the future and, and sort of where we're headed. What market trends and industry changes do you see happening? So, um, clearly what's happening right now is that the IT world and the telco world are converging. So the telcos are really uh, migrating or evolving from being just a telco service provider into a communication service provider. And there are a lot of things such as the Internet of Things, big data, that are driving that, B BYOD, bring your own device. So as consumers start uh, demanding more from the network and using more, the telcos now have a great opportunity, not just for the consumer, but also for the enterprise, where they can take advantage of IT-based applications that they can deploy in their network, uh, but at the same time, deploy it with the same level of availability and resiliency as they had in the past. Now, you had mentioned fault tolerance and how you're yes. putting that in NFV. How is that different from, from high availability? Ah, that's a great question. So we, you know, high availability is the amount of time uh, a service uh, stays uh, accessible uh, without a downtime. Uh, fault tolerance is a combination of high availability resiliency, and also um, uh, reliability. Uh, so it means that it tolerates fault. The service never goes down. In a high availability environment, there's a common belief that if the application fails, then it will switch over to another um, backup system, and maybe it will restart. In some applications, that's good enough. In other applications that require state, that's not good enough. So stateful fault tolerance is saying that if an application hits a fault, like let's say, um, say the whole server goes down, uh, the application keeps running without losing a beat. So that is the major difference between stateful fault tolerance and high availability. So is stateful fault tolerance specific to, to, to you, the way that you guys do it? Are there other ways that people are implementing fault tolerance? And is, is the way you're doing it better? Ah, great question. So, the need for stateful fault tolerance is not specific to Stratus. Uh, a lot of uh, people are doing it 
in the application. So a lot of applications that are developed today have the fault tolerance built in, where the application itself takes care of you know, making sure the state is copied somewhere else. Uh, we believe that that is a very time consuming and very complex way of doing things and it doesn't provide the agility that the telcos need, which is to deploy any application they want without having to change the code. So our approach is different because it's done in the software infrastructure, which takes all the burden away from the application and also it provides a lot of functionality that you cannot have in the application, such as increasing efficiency of redundancy. How are your prospects reacting to it? Very positively, actually, uh, because again, there's a lot of work going on in the OpenStack community, um, but it's being done uh, with the belief that we need to do everything to provide the tools to the application. And we say, no, 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 no. Don't provide the tools to the application. Let the application focus on what they're good at. If, you, if you're a router, focus on building router functions. Uh, if you're an Evolve Packet Core, focus on that. Let the load, the workload of providing availability and resiliency be in the infrastructure. So the telcos really like that because it, it makes it easier for them. The application developers also like that because they don't have to really add additional code for redundancy, which some service providers have told us, uh, some application providers have told us, has actually added complexity and therefore reduced resiliency in the application. Uh, and the telcos also like it because it means now they can take any application, an IT-based application that they otherwise would not deploy in a telco network, they can now deploy it in a telco network without having to modify it. So the reaction has been very positive. That's great. Do you have any POCs that you're involved with? Uh, yes, as a matter of fact, we do. We, uh, the most public one is the Etsy POC, which is POC 35. Uh -huh. And um, it's sponsored by uh, AT&T and NTT and also uh, iBases, uh, plus a couple of uh, partner vendors. Brocade, for example, up here uh, is also part of that, a lot communications. Uh, and then we're doing uh, POCs with telcos as well, which we have not made public yet. Great. Ali, thank you so much for taking the time. Thank you, Will. It's been great.